Hello world, welcome back to Razor RC. We are back in the workshop today and I just wanted to cover uh, seven tips for your Team Associate Rival MT-10. I like to do kind of these setup or tuning videos for all the RTRs I buy. Uh, I just kind of find that RTRs in general, you know, work pretty good out of the box, but there's always just little changes you can make that don't cost a whole lot of money to just get to drive a little better. So I wanted to share with you uh, what I found on my Team Associate Rival MT-10. This is also the rebranded Helion Avenge 10 MT. So, uh, you know, these changes will basically apply to both of those. First off, the real main weakness of this vehicle is the front arms. Um, a lot of people have been breaking these. I've broken the front arms. The rest of the truck is actually really, really solid. Uh, no issues at all, but for whatever reason, the Team Associate Rival MT-10, uh, they have, a, I think, a different material or something at these arms because they just break fairly easily. So what you can do is basically just buy the Helion version of the arms. So here we are, HLNS1544. So they're the exact same arms, just seem to be made out of a different uh, material. So I've been running these for about a month and they've hold, held up like beautifully. Uh, no problems with them and they definitely are more durable, That at least in my experience. So that's tip number one. Second tip is that the stock battery straps are just way too short. Uh, they work fine for like a 2S battery, but if you're running any sort of like normal size 3S battery, they're just gonna be too short. So what I did was pick up a set of these Arma battery straps. So these are for the 3S line of their BLX uh, vehicle. So the Typhon 3S, Big Rock 3S, Granite 3S, all those uh, type of vehicles all use the same straps and they're the perfect length for a 3S battery. So I've got my Wampi 3S here and they're nice and uh, secure. And even if you hold down the little battery cable there, you got plenty of Velcro holding uh, that battery in place. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is to lighten the center diff fluid. So out of the box, um, I think it's got 100K in the center diff. Pretty dang heavy diff fluid. Now some people like that if you like doing standing backflips or just uh, wheelies all the time then yeah leave the 100k in there if you want um, but if you want the truck to handle a little better a little more controllable actually lightening that diff fluid will help a little bit so I'm running 60k that seems pretty good this vehicle is pretty sensitive to whether you're running 2s or 3s on 3s even 60k it really is like crazy but um, it's slightly more manageable than uh, running the 100k so I'll look into that if you just want the truck to drive a little bit better Number four is uh, to soften the brakes. So the rival MT-10 comes with this little team associate radio here, the XP120. Um, it's a decent radio, not bad, no real issues overall, but this truck has a really short wheelbase and it's got a lot of power, especially on 3S. It just wants to like endo like crazy all the time. So I actually have a video on how to soften the brakes on this vehicle, even though the ESC is not programmable and the radio really doesn't have a brake feature. Um, you can kind of trick the ESC into getting softer brakes, so I'll put a link to that uh, down below and check that out if you want to soften your brakes. I highly recommend that. I'm running about 50% brakes and it's way, way, way more controllable. Number five is to get some new tires. So stock tires on this thing are actually not a bad tire. Here we go. Here's what they look like. Basically a Badlands style uh, tread pattern. Um, the, the tread pattern's really good, but there are a couple issues with this tire. Number one is that the rubber they use is like super thin and this thing balloons really easily. So it's, uh, you know, it just expands a lot, especially under power. The second issue is that the foams are like super soft. So it's almost like running with a flat tire all the time. And uh, that's decent for traction. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad for traction, but any sort of jump, you just blow straight through the foam completely down to the rim. And uh, on monster trucks, the tires actually act like a little bit of a shock absorber for landing jumps, allow you to land a little bit more plush. And with these tires, these foams, uh, you get none of that. It just blows straight through the foam, hits the rim, and then just kind of bounces off of that. So I do recommend some different tires. I haven't found the exact best tire to get. Um, I've tried these, the J Concepts choppers. Uh, they're just a little bit too big, so they tend to rub a little bit. You can just see that they're a little bit wider in diameter and uh, a little bit thicker overall as well. Um, 
Get something with a Stampede 4x4 offset. That seems to be pretty good. It'll be a little bit wider than the stock uh, tires. But yeah, if I find the, the best tire, if you have suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, um, you know, maybe something like this actually with better phones would work really well. All right, number six on the list is to uh, tighten the servo saver. So that's kind of an annoying thing about this vehicle is that the servo saver here, you can see it's sort of this screw down style. Uh, with a, a big spring on there, um, you know, sort of a standard style servo saver. It just tends to loosen all, all the time. That plastic adjuster uh, really doesn't stay put and you'll just find it backing out all the time. Now, I think there's a couple of ways to fix this. I went kind of a cheap, lazy way. I basically tightened it down to, you know, where I thought it was about right. You can see it's about, about a millimeter and a half or so of spring exposed right there. And I just kind of tightened to where I felt it was the right point. And then I just put a drop of super glue on there, actually. So it can't back out by itself. Um, it's kind of permanently stuck there, probably. I haven't tried to loosen it. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the lazy way. Probably putting something like a second adjuster on top of that and kind of having sort of like a double lock nut on there would also work, I would guess. But um, yeah, I kind of went the lazy way. Just put a tiny drop of super glue and it's staying put. So yeah, that's tip number six. Downside is you can't ever really adjust it, but um, you know, it's kind of similar to other server savers that are non-adjustable. You kind of have it fixed to a particular position. As long as you get that position right, then uh, yeah, it seems to be working pretty, pretty good. It, it just kind of tightens the sting overall. Uh, otherwise, that server saver tends to want to give all the time and it, it's really annoying. And the last tip I have is to actually uh, soften the rear springs. So this truck is a little bit weird in the sense that they kind of designed it for 2S and then they decided to make it 3S capable, put in a more powerful motor, more powerful ESC of course, and then they realized with this super short wheel bus, I mean, it just wants to backflip all the time, standing backflips or whatever. So to counteract that, they put in really stiff rear springs, but it's not properly matched to the front. So the front end is actually pretty good. It's like a 4.2 pounds per inch uh, type spring works pretty good overall sort of a general purpose type spring rate but the rears are like crazy stiff um, they're also 4.2 pounds per inch generally you want about a half pound or a pound lighter spring in the rear because the rear is actually where most of your traction is coming from uh, when you're trying to get on the throttle and sort of go over rough terrain and stuff like that so generally the, the rear springs are supposed to be softer um, but these are exact same weight and as a result they're they're really stiff. So if you're running 2S or if you're running on like really bumpy terrain, I do recommend getting some softer rear springs. Uh, you could get Team Associate SC10 4x4 rear springs. You could get Low C10 SCTE rear springs. They both will work uh, in the back. I recommend something about a 3.6 pounds per inch or 3.3 pounds per inch uh, rear spring. So from Low C, these are the silver 10 SCTE springs. Um, that's 3.3. You could go up to the green ones. That's 3.6 pounds per inch. And they'll just give you a little more compliant ride overall. Um, and just a little bit better traction. Now, if you're running 3S and you, <laughs> and you find it hard to drive, because what will happen is uh, on 3S, the softer spring will allow to just squat like crazy. And again, it's going to do a lot more wheelies. Um, a little less controllable, so that stiffer spring actually helps with that, but it just kind of depends on what you're driving on. If you're driving on like pavement or super high traction surface, I would probably run the stock springs. Um, that's fine. If you're running 3S all the time and just find the rear end just wheeling way too much on softer springs, well then I would run the stock springs. But if you're running on like really uh, bumpy terrain, or if you're running only 2S, or if you're running just off-road all the time, I do think that the uh, either the silver springs or the green springs from Losi, I think for Team Associate, it's like the red springs in the rear are about 3.6 or so. Uh, double check that. But any sort of 13 millimeter rear springs would fit. I bet also the uh, Proline, what do they call them, Prospect shocks, I think are also 13 millimeter. Uh, spring so those would also probably work um yeah so a lot of uh, opportunities to lower the spring rate on the rear i'm also running slightly uh softer shock fluid in the rear it's 30 weight up front team associated weight of course and 30 weight uh in the rear stock i'm actually running like 25 27 and a half weight uh shock fluid in the rear generally you want your rears about the same or slightly softer than the front so that seems to give a little bit better uh 
bump handling. So it just kind of depends what you want to do. If you're doing just crazy backflips and huge jumps and stuff, then yeah, you want the stiffer springs, maybe a little bit thicker oil. If you're running like bumpier terrain, you generally kind of want like a softer spring, softer soft foot. So anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely hit the like button, share, subscribe, hit the add notifications button. Um, look for more videos soon and thanks for watching.